Hello and welcome to Premier Study and Investing. It's great to have you. Thanks for stopping by. All right, what's up? So we are going to be looking at Archer Daniels Midland today, ticker ADM, basically a agricultural company, a global firm. They're involved in a lot of different companies. First and foremost, if you go looking for information from them, stay the heck away from this ADM Global Investor Day, December 10th, 2021. Total waste of time. It's like one huge advertisement. This is the better thing. Go to their uh, investor overview. We'll be looking at a couple slides from that. Okay. So this is uh, Friday, is the close of Friday, February 25th, 2022. And you can see nice run up, 2% dividends. Market cap, $44 billion. So, so this is a big one. Let's look a little bit at the earnings when we're going to look at an analyst report. But basically, I'll tell you that the analyst report is going to say not a lot of significant moats. They don't have a forecast out for, uh, here we go, a little bit of drop on revenues. But they do not have a forecast for us for EPS, which that's okay. It's a good numbers. You know, I... Uh, Honestly, I you could tell by the thumbnail that I'm not that impressed. Schwab does give it an A. Let's look at some of the other ratings. But I basically am going to be going to their investor overview. And we're going to be seeing that, you know, the profits are flat basically since 2014. So from 2014 to 2021, they're flat. We'll look at those in a second. So what do we have? Morningstar, this is to... 73.23. This is really old. This is current. This neutral rating is old. This three star by CFRA is current. And this one by Market Edge is also current. So we're going to look at this Morningstar Equity Analyst Report. These are some nice things that you get with Schwab. They have a fair value at $55. Which I agree, fifty-five dollars, and I'll show you why here in a second. It'll be based off of earnings, but um, last price when they put this out was sixty-eight, sixty-eight, and so it's another whole ten dollars above when they wrote the report. So, okay, very overvalued then as far as the Morningstar analyst. So this analyst basically thinks that the nutrition segment margin should expand. However, even with strong growth we only forecast the nutrition segment will generate 30 percent of total profits so a small segment of their business growing so in their investor presentation they talk a whole big game about ethanol and biofuels but so here we'll look at their analysis bungie Ingredion and international flavors and fragrances. So this is ADM here on the left. No economic moat. Stable trend. It's not going to improve. And so whatever. Let's jump over to this investor overview. Okay, so this is the 2025 strategic metrics of success. They're projecting earnings could be six to seven dollars per share. And right now, earnings per share, as of 125, 2022, 478. So a little under five dollars. Okay, so after a bunch of slides of really no information, you can see a bit more about where they do business. The orange is processing here, and the green is procurement. So where they're buying stuff from, right? And then so they buy and process. So fine, no problem. All over the world though. Now this is the graph that I really, really love the most. Adjusted operating profit, it's page 19. So this, so going back to 2014, you had 2016 on the adjusted operating profit. Here, 2,105, it's basically the same. That's like six years of no growth. So the other thing here is what was the explanation of this? Why the big drop off? I don't know, I wasn't able to find anything. I didn't see you know, any massive I guess it could have been grain prices. You know, people are still going to use these products all the time, ag products for humans and for animals, cooking oil, ethanol, things like this. So maybe there was something to do with oil, 
but this is largely unexplained and these are the same these two years so one of the reasons that I think that the share price should be $55 like the analyst said is that it was trading for $55 back here in 2014 they have the same profits now as they did back then why I mean why should the price on the stock be any higher why should it trade for a higher multiple also pretty much it's been this orange and this say brown color carrying the business then all of a sudden this green section came up kind of ballooned for this one year but then shrank back down to kind of more historical averages this section is decreasing so this is one of their major say top two sectors this orange one it dropped a bunch decreased for three four years then here it ballooned back up but now it's, it's shrinking again so really ag services is the only really strong business line I would say out of the four if you're looking at growth now going over to the section nutrition which the analyst said that they thought the margins were going to grow but it only represented 30 percent of the business and the analyst said that basically they don't have any real pricing power they have a lot of competitors that can do what they do so it doesn't give them a huge leg hence no moat so here on the left side we can see revenue and on the right it's going to be adjusted operating profits the orange is human nutrition the green is animal so while on the revenue side it looks like the animal kind of jumped up and then stayed the same these last two years there seems to be not a huge profit margin on that it's pretty pretty low when it comes to translating into profits and then the orange somehow it looks like sales are the same but somehow the profitability is rising. So they're figuring out a smarter way to do it. Maybe they're cutting costs. Somehow they're squeezing more profits out of the same amount of revenue. So that's promising. That's the human nutrition side. Now, if we have some kind of you know major food shortage, some kind of, I don't, I don't know, there's been a lot of pressure on fertilizers. Um, we live in the Midwest and in, in the United States, and so a lot of the farmers where we are are expecting big soybean crops because there's not going to be the available fertilizer fertilizers excuse me that we need for corn and so of course not all the farmers are going to shy away from corn and choose soybeans instead but some definitely are so what will that do for maybe these ethanol revenues yeah could impact them of course so I love this graph because again, like I was trying to make the point before, $3.23 per share adjusted EPS. At the end of 2020, they were at $3.59. Now we're at four, it was just under $5. So that's actually good, that's good. But again, look at this graph. So the dark blue is ag services and oil seeds. That's really carrying their business. Definitely was able to bounce back. But again, look where this is this is as far as operating segment profits it's lower than it was in 2014 so again $55 fine I'm not paying $79 for it if you think there's gonna be some huge you know food collapse or something like that yeah are there a lot of empty shelves yes are the supply chain stressed yes absolutely I'm with you on that are we kind of down to you know critical numbers on a lot of ingredients and raw materials? Yes. So if I'm going to make an argument for this company, I would say it's because they're going to be able to charge real high prices on some kind of increased, you know, worsening when it comes to supply and the availability of products. Otherwise, I don't see that they're really pulling in any more money than they were before, and. If they were at $55 a share here in 2014, I've said it once, I guess I'm going to say it four or five times. I don't see why it should be worth any more here today. You have to look at the number of shares, but this is this EPS, so it should be adjusted for any share buybacks and stuff like that. Maybe the balance sheet's better. I actually show a graph of it. So 2015, 2014, it was a 40, $52 stock, $47 stock, $50 stock. Something like this, 46, 45, 43. Yeah, if I could buy it for under 50, okay. But at 79, no way. So, um, no. I mean, maybe you know something more about agriculture than what I know, that you can read between the lines. But from what I can see, 
Here's another interesting graph. 2014 oil seed in corn, so 32 and 23. This is going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. Great. This is going flat, down, 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 big time. Okay. So, again, volumes are down. Uh, profits are the same. So in this graph, they're looking for long-term return on invested capital objective of 10% up here, this purple line. Their long-term WAC, this is their weighted average cost of capital. It's coming in right here at 7%. Okay, so that's their target. This is what it costs for them to borrow and do business, whether they borrow from themselves or they borrow for someone else. However, they can get their, their hands on money. It costs them 7% to do so. And whether you're taking the, the green is the average uh, four quarter average return on invested capital and this blue one is an adjusted so the blue is a little bit better than this average one so this adjustment is favorable to them but as you can see the green is below even what it costs the cost of doing business and the blue is a little bit better but both are far below their long-term objectives all right here we're just going to take a quick look at their uh, ratios compared to Bungie, General Mills, Tyson Food, Hormel, and McCormick. McCormick and Sh okay, just McCormick. Okay, so ADM is going to be on the left, and so PE of 16 times. You could definitely do better in some of these other companies. Price to sales okay, but still not better than Bungie. The peg, you'd always like to see it under one. One year sales growth is interesting, but five years growth is kind of just like everybody else, around 7%, 6-7% maybe. Ooh, the gross profit margin is not good on these companies. 3% operating profit margin, 3.2% profit margin. Hmm, tangible book is $28. Okay. Current ratio, not super strong. Quick ratio, not super strong. Long-term debt to capital. 24 times, 29 times. Turn on invested capital, 8.36%. It's a little more favorable than what we saw in that presentation that's a couple years old. Okay, so that's the gist of it. Okay, well, we'll see if I'm wrong, but that is my take, and thanks so much for joining me.